A very good evening. Thank you so much for watching UBC News tonight at 10 p.m. My name is Sharon Chondusha with Nakakone Elizabeth on Sun Language. We'll take a look at our top stories of the day. Museveni Ruto endorsed African leadership building. And in more news, two suspected thugs lynched in Wolverine. Moving on still, travel warnings issued over Australia Blaze. Yours is all with the court to benefit all. In our top stories of the day, President Yuri Museveni has advised maize farmers into the country to endeavor and improve the quality of maize so as to be able to sell their produce at regional and global markets. Now, the President was addressing representatives of farmers from districts of Chiwale, Kagadi, Mubende, Mitiana, Kasanda, and Changkwanzi at Mubende State Lodge in the Central Region. Mr. Museveni assured the farmers that the government is going to supply them fertilizers to help them improve the quality and the yield of maize. Take a look. Nigeria. President Sharon Seveni, currently in Greater Mwende region, has advised farmers in the country to endeavor and improve the quality of maize so as to be able to sell their produce at regional and global markets. <laughs> He was addressing representatives of farmers from the districts of Kivale, Kagadi, Mubende, Mitiana, Kasanda and Changkwanzi at Mbende State Lodge in Central Region. Mr. Mseveni assured the farmers that government is going to supply them with fertilizers to help them improve the quality and the yield of maize. He therefore urged farmers to consider using maize for making other products such as livestock feeds and starch that can be used in pharmaceutical companies as opposed to only getting partial from the crop. Kasori, I will say it. The Amatoki, the Ru said. Amata, the Ru said. Enyama, the Ru said. Enyanya, BC, every year, every year, every year, every year, every year, cash, everything is a cash crop. The president emphasized to maize farmers to ensure that they have the knowledge and proper storage facilities for maize to ensure that their produce is free from aflatoxins that affect the quality of maize and are also hazardous to people's health. <laughs> He further advised farmers to always use clean tents and dry their produce as opposed to simply spreading it on mere ground. Regarding the issue of quality pesticides and seeds, President Seven advised farmers to use trustworthy suppliers to avoid getting fake products that will lead to losses. He agreed with the farmers on the essence of starting farmers' savings and credit cooperative organizations, circles, at parish, sub-county and county levels in the country to shield farmers from acquiring loans from money lenders who charge very high lending interest rates that farmers failed to pay. UBC TV, Harriet Nambi.
Kenya's Deputy President William Ruto has earned another feather in his cap with the Leadership Institute named after him at Chigandes Makere University. He follows into the footsteps of former President Mwai Kibaki, an alumni of Makere University, who helped build a presidential library. During the groundbreaking ceremony, Ruto asked all East African member states to speed up the integration process so that the prospects of the East African community can be realized. In more news, President Yuri Museveni has pledged 100,000 U.S. dollars to the construction of the William Roto Institute of African Studies building that is slated to be erected at Makere University in Kampala District. The pledge was revealed in a meeting between Mr. Museveni and visiting Deputy Prime President of Kenya, William Roto, who called on him at Mobende State Lodge, during which Mr. Museveni endorsed the construction of the complex. Now, Mr. Roto said development in Africa must be contextualized and localized to fit the African norms and values. President Museveni and Deputy President Ruto also endorsed the proposed building of the Yore Kaguta Museveni Library that they will hold that will hold Mr. Museveni's political journey, articles, speeches and that the African leaders literally wax. The PPU has a detailed report. The Deputy President of Kenya, William Ruto, has laid the foundation stone for the construction of African Leadership Institute at Makere University. <laughs> William Luto's Leadership Institute's goals will include developing innovative approaches to teaching and learning about Africa and enhancing intellectual and cultural heritage. I am proud to play my small and humble role in breaking ground for another inspired and pioneering initiative by a legendary university. I fully subscribe to the vision behind the establishment of this institute and envisage it quickly becoming the cornerstone of an African-led revolution in higher education and research whose impact will be global. The Institute will also contribute to the discussion and analysis of critical development challenges facing African societies. Vice President William Luto applauded Mackay University for the gesture and advised all African member states to speed up the integration process so that the prospects of East African community can be realized. It is time to reclaim African institutional legitimacy through epistemic agency in order to recalibrate the entire paradigm, narratives and institutions for socio-economic transformation. An Afro an Afrocentric knowledge base enriched by interdisciplinary complementarity will lead us on a sustainable path of appropriate, relevant, and homegrown institutions. The Minister of East African Affairs, Jeno Kahindo Tafire, represented the Prime Minister of Uganda, Dr. Ruhakana Rugonda, and urged Ugandans to unite for the development. Let's make a mark when we are here present. And that mark should be improving the quality of life of, the, of our people. Let's concentrate on building the region. Make University Vice Chancellor Professor Barnabas Nawangwe said William Luso's Institute is a big achievement, especially when they are aiming at becoming number one institution in Africa. There could have been no better person to champion this cause than the youthful and energetic William Samoy Ruto. Admired by many in our region and beyond. 
for the resilience and determination is exhibited by you as a national and global leader. I believe that this institute will inspire many young academicians and leaders in Africa so that they attain the necessary tenets of leadership to move Africa forward. During the same occasion, Kenyanese Ruto marked his 53rd birthday. Construction of the facility is estimated to cost 50 billion shillings. Joseph Bule, UBC, Makerere. The Ugandan People, People's Defense Forces has assured the public of tight security during this festive season. This was in an interview with the forces spokesperson, Brigadier Richard Kademire, at the Ministry of Defense headquarters in Buya in Kampala district. Haruna reports. Uganda's People's Defense Forces spokesperson, Brigadier Richard Kalimiri, has assured the public that UPDF will continue to protect the civilians within their mandate provided in the Constitution. The country remains uh, largely peaceful. All our borders are peaceful, save for where we have a threat from the Allied Democratic Front in the Eastern DRC. But that western border is well secured both by the UPDF and the local defense uh, units that were recruited and trained from the districts bordering uh, the DRC. So the country remains uh, peaceful and uh, stable. This has created uh, an enabling environment for our people to move on towards uh, achieving social economic uh, transformation. As you know, peace is a prerequisite for everything. Without peace, you cannot have uh, investors who are critical to build our economic base. Kalimira has described 2019 as a year of peace, despite some challenges facing the security system in Uganda, also outlined the UPDF achievements. Year 2019, as we close it, us as UPDF, we feel very, very satisfied because we have uh, basically delivered on our mandate. The sovereignty and territorial integrity of our country continues to be protected as uh, this is one of the functions given to us in the, in the, in the Constitution. Kalimire called upon the public to assist the security agencies in providing relevant information to crack down on criminals, especially in Kampala, metropolitan area. We have uh, called upon the people to be more vigilant. There is uh, nothing that uh, defeats the, the people. Once the people are mobilized, once the people are uh, the vigilant and they are part of the, of the security construct, then uh, you will always be assured of uh, success. On deployment of UPDF forces in Somalia, Kalimira said UPDF will continue working hand in hand with Somalian forces to make sure Somalia gets the lead of Al-Shabaab under the AMSOM umbrella. Business in Mogadishu is, uh, is booming. The airport is very active. The seaport is very active. This is good for an economy that has been in shambles. So once business is booming, that means the country is able to collect taxes and is able to provide the basic services to, to, to the people. The presence of UPDF has given uh, confidence to both uh, the government, the people of, uh, of Somalia, and the international community. Mutesa Sira Haruna reporting for UBC News. Thank you, Aaron. And now Uganda Broadcasting Corporation has celebrated end of year with promises of a better future in the broadcasting industry. The managing director, UBC Winston Agaba, officiated the event held at UCD premises in Kampala District. Staff were advised to have a positive attitude towards life and work and represent the corporation positively wherever they go. Kaya reports. 
the management of Uganda Broadcasting Corporation has organized an end of year party for staff in appreciation of work done. The event was characterized by dining, whining and staff performance seemed enjoyable by every staff who watched their colleagues showcasing their exceptional challenges. Merry Christmas! The managing director of Uganda Broadcasting Corporation, Winston Agaba, urged staff to promote positivity of the corporation and their life. Winston Agaba assured the staff that UBC is set to blossom more next year because of the annual plan aimed at building capacity of the staff. UBC, we have suffered so much negative negativity, both on the social front, even from our own selves. My appeal is may we celebrate today and put behind us all that negative energy and prepare ourselves to launch ourselves into 2020 with a more positive approach to life. The management awarded the outstanding staff in 2019, especially the sports team that produced the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations advert. And Mr. Benjamin Egeso. Okay. The Deputy Managing Director, Uganda Broadcasting Corporation, Maurice Mugisha, urged staff to be mild skilled in order to compete in the job market. You need to go on holiday asking yourself, what else can I do on my job at UBC? So if you're on radio, you need to be thinking, what can I do on TV? If you're on television, you need to tell us what else you can do on radio or on the digital front. The Human Resource Manager, Uganda Broadcasting Corporation, Nalongo Ferista, thanked management for the guidance in the execution of their duties plus the staff. There is no way we can succeed without you. We appreciate the work that you have done, all your contributions in all aspects that have made UBC what it is today. And our motto as Human Source, we say, succeeding through people. Therefore, it's undeniable that our success depends on you as the staff of UBC. The end of your party has been characterized with a number of activities including challenges made by the staff towards their bosses. So that reporting. Thank you so much, Sudat Kai, for reporting our residents from about 50 homesteads in Bohimba, sub county Chikuwe district, and Chigorovaya, sub county Hoima district, are bitter over storm blasting activities by road construction companies. Residents accused to Chinese firms of blasting stones in the area, disregarding the safety. China Railway Number no. 5 is using stones from Chihoko Village, Bohimba, sub county Chikube district, for the construction of the Bulina Kawoya Road. Is quarrying stones from Haibale village, Kigorobia sub county, Hoima district, for the construction of Hoima One Circle Road. This involves stone blasts at quarries. However, residents are not happy with the activity they describe as detrimental to their health. Johnson Isingoma, one of the affected residents in Bukona, Kigorobia sub county, says. Due to the continuous blasts at the stone quarry, his house has cracked and there seems to be no compensation despite making various attempts. David Rakurataki, a resident of Kihoko village, Bohimba sub-county, explains that some pregnant women in the area are getting miscarriages. And other diseases have resulted from the, from the waves, from the waves and the... When the stone is a crack, there is a lot of sound which comes out and the smoke 
plus the dust has affected our eyes has affected us in very many ways. The LC50 person Chikube district, Francis Kazini, admits that they have received complaints from the people and appealed to UNRWA and China Railway 5 to ensure that the problem is addressed. Finding out name by name, man name by name. Bakasasurwa, a center of the Kaja that you were about to abandon, but it was to Gahanga Yunra, and we are calling upon the executive director Yunra, uh, Madame Kajina, or Kujata Hemon Songas in the fall 2021 with a Kahikiri, a cop with the great visible of Abantu Sangani Vanavana government, if a Takuno. Hoima District Secretary for Production and Natural Resources, Geoffrey Komakech, says the district has played its part and forwarded the matter to concerned authorities. It is. But when it comes to buildings and land, the powers lies in the hands of the chief government value. Joseline Nyangoma, the Hoima District Natural Resources Officer, says the problem is serious. Dokas Kumuno, UBC TV And the drug bar. On average, almost 250,000 people die on the road in Africa each year. As a proud African, this breaks my heart knowing that so many deaths could have been avoided. So when you're on the road, follow these safe steps and help save lives. Multitasking whilst driving is dangerous. Never take your eyes or attention off the road. Keep both hands on the steering wheel at all times. Don't eat or drink. Leave your mobile phone alone. Keep the music down. And stay focused. So when you're on the road, follow these safe steps and help save lives. We all have a role to play in road safety. Together, let's make Africa's road safer. You're still watching GBC News tonight. In more stories, President Yuri Museveni has passed out over 6,000 local defense units at Kawewe Tayi PDF Training School in Nakaseke District. During the pass out, President Museveni commended the citizens for their enthusiasm shown in expressing interest in security matters. He says over 10,000 have expressed interest, though few were successful. Details follow. Over 6,000 local defense forces personnel have been passed out at a ceremony officiated by President Yoel Kaguta Museveni. The pass out event at Kaweweta Recruit Training School in Nakaseke District started with a display of shooting skills. The shooting range by the LDUs proved their capability in defense that earned a promotion for the best two recruits by the president into joining his security team, the Special Forces Command. The impressive quick match by the local defense officers made the day colorful. During the pass out, President Museveni commended the citizens for the enthusiasm in expressing interest in security matters. We embarked on this recruitment of LDUs because some people had thought of using crime to undermine our progress. They started killing, killing people in Kampala area especially. Museveni urged the authorities to continue equipping the LDUs with more skills into becoming professional officers. You should train more and learn more. And the people who, who are managing you should make arrangements for you to deepen your understanding. Military knowledge is scientific. Whatever they teach you, 
is in order to improve your body and mental capacity in terms of seeing, reacting, and coordinating your actions. The president was also impressed by the quality of educational background of the recruits. These people whom you, you think are villagers, they have got 69 degree holders. This one is here. Diploma holders, 340. S6, 677. So out of the 6,000, more than a thousand are air level and above. The Chief of Defense Forces General David Muhozi tasked the recruits on discipline and respecting the citizens. To the LDUs, I implore you to be disciplined, like the Commandant said, to serve and put our country above self, to be loyal, to mind your health, respect Wanaichi, and protect our image and our country. Viva! Viva! Rais wa Uganda! For UBC TV News, I am Philip Aguta. Congratulations to all those that got in. HIV and AIDS remains a thorn in the foot of Africa, including Uganda, often causing a denial and sometimes fighting over property among couples. Now, this is partly attributed to cultural practices that dictate that a woman shouldn't question anything that a man says or any decision that he makes. This makes it difficult for a couple to negotiate safe sex, a reason why government needs to strengthen the Domestic Violence Act to avoid vulnerability. Take a look. The sensor landing site in Masaka needs no description on how serious the prevalence of HIV AIDS is and how it is perceived. It is a place where to some, life is not easy, especially when one is HIV positive. 38 year old Mary Nagunja, who has lived here for years, is the best example to this. <laughs> She lost her parents and lives on the mercy of good Samaritans. A formerly proud mother of four lost three of her children, including the family's breadwinner, her husband. Even when she has not been depressed, to the extent of resorting to alcohol consumption. Her biggest challenge remains feeding. Naguja may have been lucky not to be subjected to any attempt of inheritance by her husband's relatives, but that is not enough to rule out the existence of the practice. It is indicated that a meaningful decrease in AIDS risk in Uganda society will require changes in male behaviors and attitudes concerning gender relationship and sexuality. On a bright, sunny afternoon of Sunday 1st December 2019, which is the world's designated AIDS day, Uganda's vice president addresses the gathering in Kayunga district. He points out the continuous existence of outdated traditional and cultural practices that he says continue to fuel the spread of HIV AIDS. Traditional practices 
such as widow, inheritance, polygamy, and wife sharing are significant factors in HIV transmission. Unfortunately, in such practices as widow inheritance, women often have little or no say, although the trend has started changing. This is Neria, a late 1990s movie acted in the southern African country of Zimbabwe with a tagline depicting greed in her role as a widow who has just lost her husband. Renowned actress, Jesse Mungoshi, portrays the changing times against such barbaric acts. Have you chosen not to remarry? Sekuru, I have my own life to live. Such could be the strong stance and empowerment that many women in Africa, including Uganda, could be lacking. It is such disempowerment that caused 50-year-old Flavia Chomugisha, her marriage. Chomugisha is the executive director of Action for Health, Human Rights and HIV AIDS. It is a health rights advocacy organization dedicated to raising awareness of the human rights aspects of health and the quality of health care for all Ugandans. 1994 was the year when she was diagnosed with HIV AIDS. News which upon sharing, neither perplexed nor surprised her husband. I think maybe he already knew because he only asked her could you be pregnant and yet. So I just went, I went to my sister. I remember going to my sister and then he came looking for me. And we had a friend, Sam, he used to work with the Case Western Reserve University. But also in Mulago and they were dealing, with, he was in the lab. So he would take our blood, we agreed we would do the CD4. At that time CD4 we had not known. Mm -hmm. But me, I knew that he would check our blood regularly. So we, we, we managed to live as such. But if she took it lightly, it was just a matter of time for the reason behind her husband's strange reaction to be manifested. It took only three years and this is what happened. My husband used to have a briefcase that for the last several years I've been, I've been staying with him. It was never locked. So one day I come, I touch it. <laughs> it is locked. I'm like, what, is, what has happened finally? Because when you find something locked in a place where you have not been looking, then you know there are certain trust issues. So I sat, it had these numbers, I sat 000, 001, that side open, 000, until I want to, until I open. So then I did find that um, he had a company, which was for him, his mom, and my boys, two boys. So I think that was around, uh, not 97, it was around 1990. Then I found he had uh, registered assets, what we owned in those names. So me, I wasn't there. By that time, I had produced my last daughter. That was around 99. So I didn't even, I, I shed a little bit of tears, but then afterwards I said, why am I crying? Mm -hmm. After all, the boys are what? Are also exactly. part of that. Mm -hmm. But then I looked at myself and my daughter. And if she thought going back to school would create harmony, it only marked the beginning of the end to her marriage. I said I cannot stand not going to school. Because if a man you're living with, a person you are living with, denies you education, they actually don't love you. It was after frustration from human rights bodies whose redress she had sought that she gave up and moved on. There were three partners, Jisache, Muria Gonja, and another one. So the third one, the husband was working as a junior to my husband in the, in the authority they were working mm -hmm. in. So my husband threatened the husband, husband and said. then they pulled out of my case. Such is trauma that comes with news of one being HIV positive. Chomugisha may have been fortunate enough not to lose her life, but not 35-year-old Emmanuel Tosime. <laughs> 
Tusime was a driver with the China Chongqing International Construction Company, based in Hoima, in western Uganda. <laughs> he was allegedly hit on the head by his wife Joan Trinomjuni using an axe that killed him instantly. She accused him of being HIV positive and enrolling for antiretroviral therapy without her knowledge. <laughs> This is just an example of death resulting from domestic violence as a result of a spouse keeping HIV status a secret from his partner. It affirms police figures that acknowledge the prevalence of gender-based violence, sometimes with a linkage to HIV AIDS. In our next episode, we seek to explore more of this in detail. Henry Okurut, UBC. Thank you, Henry Okurut. Please stay safe and go find out what your status is in regards to HIV and AIDS. In more stories, in its New Year message, the judiciary has asked all Ugandans to appreciate the rule of law. Now, the Deputy Chief Justice Alfonso Winodolo says respect of the rule of law is cardinal in ensuring good governance and national stability. The Deputy Chief Justice Alfonso Winodolo has advised Ugandans to respect the rule of law and celebrate the festive season in peace and respect of each other. We rededicate ourselves to the pursuit of our sworn undertaking to render justice to all manner of people in accordance with the constitution of the Republic of Uganda without fear of favor, affection, or ill will. We beseech the Almighty God to strengthen and enable us to achieve this noble result. I also take this opportunity to urge fellow Ugandans to always abide by the constitution and laws of our land in whatever we do. This was during an interface with the media, also witnessed by the Permanent Secretary Pius Vigilimana, who urged judicial officers to dispense quality justice and ensure zero tolerance to corruption. We must make corruption very unattractive and that a corrupt, free Uganda starts with me. I wish you well, Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. The acting chief regist of the High Court, Tom Chemtai, congratulated all judicial officers over completing 2019 and urged them to ensure Ugandans access quite a judicial service. Ovations that lead to speedy disposal of cases in the courts the coming year. In more stories the Archbishop of Mbara Archdiocese, the Right Reverend Paul Bachenga has asked the Christian community to be conscious of their security during this festive season. Archbishop Bachenga revealed this while addressing the press while delivering his Christmas message at the Archdiocese head office, Nyamitanga Cathedral, Mbara Municipality. Details follow. Innocent children have been battered, starved, sexually abused, and sacrificed or murdered in cold blood with impunity. Yet this phenomenon is not unique to children. Their mothers and some women in general have also undergone similar atrocities. As we rejoice in the birth of our Lord and Savior, I exhort each one of you, each one of us, who will come to adore and worship him, to imitate the Christ who grows up in the hidden life of the family in Nazareth. The one who grows up and walks out of the mundane noises to spend nights on hills and mountains 
immersed in quiet prayer, is inviting us. The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Health, Dr. Diana Twini, is happy with salary enhancement for over 40,000 health workers in this year ending 2019. This was during an interview with UBC crew at her office at the Ministry of Health, Wandege, in Kampala. The Permanent Secretary, Minister of Health, Dr. Diana Twini, has said the Minister has achieved a lot in service delivery this year 2019. However, Dr. Tuna advises the public to enjoy responsibly during this festive season without endangering their health. We have worked on about 124 health centers where we have expanded the maternity and put in infrastructure that support mothers that don't have to walk long distances. But this, this as we go on, as we close crossing over to the next yeah, calendar year. Yeah. Uh, we want to see the districts recruit for those facilities because we have provided funds for them to ensure that we, we recruit enough staff that can manage those new facilities that we have upgraded. Atune says, as health workers, they are happy with the president, especially the increment of health workers across the country. President Yoem Seveni for championing this because he is the one who really um, pushed pushed us. We still see a lot of our workers, the mindset is just to sit in a facility, in a hospital, in a health center and to wait for someone who is sick so that they are treated. But we want to reverse this. We are focusing on prevention because... Diana Twine also advised Ugandans to make use of the treated mosquito bed nets to avoid malaria infection. We want you to avoid situations that are unhygienic that will lead you to food poisoning and, and all those conditions that will predispose you to getting diarrhea or diarrhea and vomiting or any other condition that can bring your health. Hatune says the ministry is to make use of primary health care services across the country and to ensure the national health insurance bill is enacted into law for the good of the public. She cautioned Ugandans against HIV and AIDS through behaving responsibly. HIV is still here with us and let us live a life of caref carefulness, even in our celebrations. Let us avoid situations that put us in, a, in, a, in an awkward position that we are vulnerable and we, we find ourselves in situations that predispose us to HIV, especially the young people the holiday makers, we want to, to request you that you are responsible, that, that you take care of yourselves, even for those that cannot completely avoid that, we ask you that you use condom. In our business stories, the new Malaba one stop border post bridge has eased the flow of inbound and outbound cargo traffic. To be officially commissioned early next year, the bridge, the parking area, access roads, and the electronic cargo clearing systems have enabled the clearance of at least 1,200 inbound trucks per day. However, as Dennis Sigal reports, the new developments have had a negative social economic impact on the border community who benefited immensely from congestion and manual clearing systems. 
Malaba one-stop border post located in eastern Uganda is the biggest entry point of cargo destined for the country and through the country. On average, the border post clears at least 1,000 to 1,200 incoming consignments in a day. Previously, before we had this exit road, we were using sharing the same road. Meaning in such an incident where you are seeing a breakdown, it means now cargo which is going wouldn't be going. But because now incoming cargo is separated from outgoing, we are able at least to proceed. As you see on my right, now this is the outbound road, which we call exit road, export road, or outbound, in simple language. Although the OSBP has been operational since 2015, challenges that impede the great achievement of the one-stop border post concept still exist. The building is on. We are sharing offices with our counterparts, that is KRA and all other agencies of KRA. We have sitting officers who sit in Kenya, we also have sitting officers of Kenya who sit here in Uganda. So as far as the concept is concerned, the concept is operational. But as far as infrastructure is concerned, it's not yet complete. In the recent years, government of Uganda and Kenya, with the support of development partners such as the European Union, World Bank and DFID, have invested a significant amount of resources in upgrading these border posts to international standards. I'm standing in between two very important pieces of infrastructure. On my left hand is the old Malaba Bridge and on my right hand is the new Malaba Bridge. The users of that old bridge will tell you that it was a nightmare, but this one has really sorted out some of the major inefficiencies that were being experienced at this one-stop border post. Currently, Trademark East Africa, with funding from United Kingdom's Department for International Development, DFID, is funding the construction of a new wide parking area and the construction of a new inbound and outbound access roads at a tune of $2 million. The data given to us by URA shows that trade has more than doubled within the last four years because of this facilitation and this engagement between the two parties. So I think it's quite important that we acknowledge the fact that trade is actually increasing within the East African community, which is uh, encouraging and we hope that we see more. The, the cooperation between Uganda and Kenya at this border post. I think that is very important and that is probably uh, the, the deciding factor why this works and, and why uh, the time and the costs of moving goods across this border has reduced so enormously. As the works continue, immense benefits are being registered. Truck drivers who used to endure the dreadful old bridge and congestion in both sides of the border are happy. The new bridge is so nice. Unlike the old bridge, this one truck this bridge is the best. It was difficult to use the old one because it was slippery and too rough. However, the state of the art OSBPs have in contrast affected livelihoods and is seen by the border community as an impediment to their socioeconomic well being says Edmund Utebemberwa, a Uganda Revenue Authority customs supervisor. Business, if someone was taking here two weeks, he was crashing money all over. Hotel, accommodation, bars, restaurants, shoe shiners, all businesses are booming. But now that client who used to come and cause inflation, you are saying do not stop. It means it becomes bad news to the community. For locals and cross-border traders to appreciate the infrastructural development URA in collaboration with other government agencies situated at the border regularly conduct sensitization meetings. The community, as we are doing the OCBP trainings sponsored by JICA at the moment, we don't only concentrate on ourselves, we call the public and private sector. We call the ROCs, right, our ROC1, ROC2, the council, the mayors. We know the moment we preach the gospel through them, they will be the best people to go ahead and put it down. We get the associations, border, border associations, cross-border women traders association, men, transporters, and we get the executives first and sensitize them slowly, slowly, and they come in. The Malaba and Busia one-stop border posts located on the northern corridor are the busiest in the region. However, with the standard gauge railway transport mode soon to be introduced in the entire northern corridor, cargo traffic is expected to decrease significantly at these key regional border crossings. 
Denise Goa for UBC Business. Thank you, Dennis Sigoa. You know, he's encouraging people who have encroached on road reserves to vacate before the enforcement team comes into action in the capital, Uganda. In the capital city of Uganda, Kampala district, the exercise has been enforced along Entebbe Road. Uganda National Roads Authority has embarked on clearing and securing road reserves across the country. Along Entebbe Road, the exercise kicked off with a number of properties erected on reserves destroyed through measuring the length of the road to ensure precision. The old roads like this one we are on today has 15 meters. And that's why you're seeing us measuring before we take action, just to confirm that the structure or the temporary structure is not in the road reserve. So 15 meters on both sides, that is 30. The field operation manager, Yunra, Robert Tumina, says the exercise has moved on smoothly, though with a few cases of resistance. They are aware. That's why you're not seeing so much, uh, you know, conflicts. We are not putting ropes with them because they are aware that they are supposed to go away. As you know that people have to act with action, that's when they say on the ground and that's when they act. So we are not really fast facing much challenge apart from some resistance of giving us time and where someone allows, I mean, agrees to remove by themselves, then we have, they have to do it today. There's no any other chance. This is aimed at expanding and decongesting reserves, though one can be granted permission to operate on a road reserve when request. Rather than having congestion, everyone puts up the business they want. You find the market is coming up, or all of a sudden it is in the road and causing accidents. So we're allowing those ones, but besides those applications, we're also going to put the measures, we're going to put the signposts for road reserve, clear signposts. There are, are marked posts already, which are old by Ministry of Works, but we are planning to put notices in the road reserve and police, traffic police and union police will be monitoring to make sure that people are not encroaching anymore. Over time, people have made it a routine to construct and start business within road reserves, but the union enforcement team has now been deployed to discourage any further infringement. Mtoni Hilda and Ivan Kahwa for UBC. When Uganda was short of sports infrastructure, the onus fell on various bodies, notably Uganda Olympic Committee, which seized the opportunity and is now delivering on that front. This Uganda Olympic Committee is doing so with various partners, including the French Embassy. Have a look. Uganda's lack of infrastructure is a major Achilles heel to sports development in the country. The government has intensified its efforts. The process is slow, thus calling for others to pursue a just cause. Uganda Olympic Committee is at the height of these efforts, starting at grassroots level. It has set up multi-purpose hard weather courts at various schools, with the latest a witnessing launch of construction at Naguru Katari Primary School. We managed to raise some money. That money, we decided to build hard courts, which the community can use as well as the students at the school, and we give um, the youth the decent facilities to practice and play sport. Hopefully our future champions will be made from these um, very facilities. We've already built two in Nakivugu Primary School, which is a very densely populated area, and the police primary school in Zambia, uh, Kiboli. Uh, and those two facilities, it, it's, it's very special because we not only have the kids and the community, but we have the police netball team, basketball team, and handball team. This particular setup at Naguru Katari is a result of various relations between the French Embassy and Uganda through the Uganda-France Friendship Week, targeting gender equality. Let me state this. The main background of this project was the question of gender. I didn't inform the ambassador that when the world is fighting for equality and the gender in particular and the women and girls, this Nagur Katari is one of the few schools that has gone beyond the quota of gender members. 
The French ambassador to Uganda, Jules Amanda, promises to fund towards infrastructure development to benefit the country not only through tenets like respect and equality, but also spy economic development. On the one hand, you have the talent in this country, but to push this talent to become the best in the world, because you can make it uh, in many areas, uh, you should also have the best equipment. So, uh, what the French Embassy uh, has been doing, well, doing with you will continue the job, and I think that uh, together we can, we can do more and more. These multi purpose hard courts will help Uganda solve its problem during the rainy season and take care of various disciplines, including handball, hockey, netball, basketball, and football. There is no doubt Uganda has become a sporting nation and uh, we are building on that. A good uh, sporting environment can only be created with the good and best facilities you can get. So a facility like this will come a long way to enhance sports development, not in, in, only in Naguru, Katale, but the whole of Nakawa, even eventually the whole of Kampala, all of, uh, the whole of Uganda. Uganda Olympic Committee is ensuring it backs up infrastructure development with human resource and on that front has graduated more than 40 in the advanced sports management course. John Burns, Sendam, reporting. Daja University has yet again won the Association of Uganda University Sports National Competition at outclassing 17 others at University of Chisubi. John Burns, Sendam, report. Ndeja University Sports Kando continues to shine with yet another gong added to its already glittering trophy cabinet. Ndeja has emerged overall champions at the 2019 Association of Uganda University Sports Championship hosted at University of Kisubi. The latest triumph collected with 10 gold medals fetched the Ruero Best Institution, its fifth consecutive university games title. <laughs> To the title, Ndeja University was dominant in basketball, swimming, scrabble, karate, woodball and athletics, which they made their own in this competition. And we always bring people work up and work. But at least bringing a medal or doing something to the school. That's why we always organize early, we train always, we don't wait for the time of competition. Then we come and compete. We always train, we compete in, in trials, in Nambole to prepare the team. But for us as a university, we have been provided all the facilities and all the time to train for the, the, the games. Ndeje was, however, closely pursued by Uganda Christian University that had nine gold medals, with both gender football and volleyball competitions won by the Mukono Best Institution. Makera University finished third with the six gold medals, including dominance in pool, while Makera University Business School finished fourth at the games of 18 institutions. John Burns, Sentamo, reporting. That brings us to the end of our news bulletin at 10 p.m. Thank you so much for watching UBC News tonight with me, Sharon Chondisha and Nakakone Elizabeth on sign language from the team. And I have a lovely night and we'll leave you with a weather forecast. Time for the weather.